Yeah, Thursday it'll be um, what we call the Beanie Bowl, but it'll be not really a scrimmage, but it's kind of go through all the situations which we've been doing. But uh, to put the uniforms on and have the band there, the scoreboard, it'll be nice. Be good Thursday night. What challenges, if any, are there for the for the kids with this morning schedule and figuring out their classes and so forth? Well, they don't have to figure out their classes. I think we've blocked out uh, a, a couple hours in the morning and a couple hours in the afternoon. The, the challenge is making sure they get to bed early. And uh, I think as we go along and do it throughout the season, you know, they'll they'll be getting to bed earlier and earlier. I hope they are now. I mean, it's uh, seven o'clock is early, but I've, some some folks go at six or even earlier. So seven means you need to be ready to go at seven, which means you usually got to be over here by five thirty or six o'clock. But I like it so far. The players seem to like it. The most of them I've talked to, and they'll come back this afternoon for a little lift, a little meeting as well. What do you like about it? Well, the uh, basic thing I like about it is we get, a, get the hard work in early, and then it gives us time in the afternoon to coaches to watch film. And, and I kind of didn't, you know, I didn't like waiting around until 6 to practice in camp. And then uh, usually when school starts, we had to do it at 3.30 in the afternoon, which is a little warm this time of year in Tucson. So I think all in all, this is going to work out pretty good. Has J.J. Taylor been everything you expected him to be? So yeah, far? he's been really good. I'm, you, you knew what he had uh, physically. Just to know how quickly, mentally, a young guy will pick it up. And, and Coach McGee's done a great job, and, and he'll play as a freshman. Given that you have Orlando and Nick, who are kind of the, you know, the one-two punch, what kind of role can J.J. carve out for himself? The same year? as them, pretty much. I think we, we look for like at least three and maybe four tailbacks that we can put in. And, and some, some of the guys will be better at certain plays than others, and we know that. But uh, J.J. can, you know, he's there's nothing that – that he can't do right now uh, in our offense, so he'll play. Has he surprised you in any way? I mean, you mentioned the mental side. I mean, no, because I, I knew he's a sharp guy. And the thing that we knew about when we recruited him that he is a guy that was that loved football. Just that was, uh, you know, it was his passion. And you know, we got a lot, we got a lot of guys like that. But JJ was one that you could tell the way he played. In recruiting him, you know, he had an obsession with 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 the game, and that's why he's playing on play early. Do you, remember, do you remember recruiting uh, Rod Smith back in the day? To I do. You know, I knew he his, said he picked uh, another school up first. He said, "Yeah, he went to a, um, a different school. I knew his family, and he was uh, he was a really good athlete. He was a heck of a basketball player too. And so when he transferred and got him in Glenwood, he had to sit out a year. But while he was sitting out a year, you know, I can tell this guy can throw. He was sharp. Uh, I mean, he just got Rod has a great understanding of the game too. Was he, was he a guy that you could always tell had like a coaching gene? And a no guy. question. Yeah. You know, he's the son of a coach, yeah. you know, and his, his uncle's were, uncle was a coach. So, you know, he, he grew up around sports and um, was kind of like me in the fact that I think his, his off-field activities were all centered around sports. How much digging have you had to do to, to figure out maybe what BYU is going to do? As far as it's been really difficult. Probably so the most challenging – uh, that we've I've had in a long, long time because you don't you're not they're they're new on all three phases, and you're not exactly sure have any idea what they're going to do. And there's no spring game footage or TV spring game TV, nothing like that footage that we can look at. So it's, we are really in the dark. So does that make this a game where in-game adjustments are going to be maybe even absolutely. more important than usual? Uh, absolutely critical early, and we've got to be able to adjust early. You don't want to wait a half or or three quarters, so we, we've got to have a plan for that. How would you describe Anu's personality to someone who he's, he's, he's generally laid back, as most people know, uh, but he's become a little more vocal, which we needed him to do. I don't want him to be, you know, I don't know if he has to be a different personality. I don't want him to be a different person, but he's got to be more vocal at times uh, in communication, and I've seen that in camp. He has indicated that he's more than willing to help out the other quarterbacks. Is that unusual at that position because it's one where only one guy can play? I don't think so. I think you find that most time that we're across the country where guys are competing and no matter what the position and even at quarterback where they're, they communicate a lot and try to help each other out because it's, yeah, I think the end goal certainly is to win. And if everybody's playing better, you're going to win. One last thing, BYU hasn't announced who their quarterback is. What challenges does that present to you? Well, they're both really good players. So, I, you know, obviously Taysom Hill is a guy that, that's a great threat running, but so is uh, Tanner. So uh, we're gonna, we'll prepare for both of them. But you know, I don't, you know, it's kind of hard to prepare for what they're going to do because you don't even have an idea how their schemes are. So 
Like I said, there's a lot of question marks that we're gonna have to figure out pretty soon.